me say before I read the scripture what a joy it has been uh, being here these last few nights. Bless the Lord. You folks will just preach it, preach it to death. Bless the Lord. I mean, that's like I said, sick of the bulldog. And I appreciate that. I, I've had liberty. Horace and I were talking about it before the service. And uh, it's just it's just been a good spirit all week. Thank you, And I appreciate that. I really do. And I want to thank you for coming back. If you were here Sunday night, uh, I want to thank you for coming Sunday night. And if you were here Monday night, Tuesday night, I want to thank you for coming back. And I want to thank you for coming back tonight. Okay. After you heard me preach, I didn't know if you'd want to come back or not. But I appreciate it. Let me also say uh, that uh, I'll be leaving this service, but your, your pastor is going to be here with you, I think, 17 years. Last Sunday, 17 years. Yes. And he, he evidently uh, loves you, and I believe you love him, Amen. because the average stay. Baptist Church, the average stay in the Baptist Church is two years. Now you take uh, those churches where the pastor has been there a long time, and those who have been in their church a short time, and the average all that up, and it comes to two years. So obviously uh, preachers are coming in and moving on, coming in and moving out. I had a preacher one time in revival, and uh, he had just moved to a church, and so he told me, and, and I don't know why he told me, but he said, as soon as I move into a church, I start sending out resumes. And he never had to stay in the church for the hire any more than about two years. And I don't know why in the world man won't do that. You can't even get to know your folks in that short period of time. And as a preacher friend of mine said, you can't even get to learn who your enemies are. <laughs> in that length of time but that's the truth uh, about two years is as long as pastors stay so Brother Howard's been here uh, 17 years and I know that you love him and you appreciate him Amen. next Sunday, not this coming Sunday the following Sunday I will be celebrating my 37th year at Pleasant Hill Amen. in Morganton Amen. 37 years I'm going to start around the fall say this and my wife gets mad at me every time. People say, how in the world did you stay in that church that long? And I said, I couldn't find another job. <laughs> couldn't find another church. Nobody else wanted it. But I'm going to tell you this, I've loved every minute of it. Amen. 37 years I have loved every minute of it. I really have. Matter of fact, I've loved it so much I hate to retire. Amen. I don't know when that's going to happen. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm 72 years old and I think, man, it's time for me to hang it up and kind of loaf a little bit. Young man. But, uh, I'll stay in the Lord. But you support this man of God. Uh, Amen. And, and you have. You have. And I'm, I'm just encouraging you to continue doing that. Uh, 17 more years, you'll be 97, won't you? Uh, about the 5th of September, I'll be 74. <laughs> You're a young man. You're, I'm, young, I'm older than you are. <laughs> but uh, let me ask you to pray for me, and uh, I'll pray for you. Amen. And, uh, we'll pray for each other. Amen. Amen. You, you just keep hanging in there. Just keep uh, doing what you're doing, and the Lord will bless you. Amen. He will bless you in a mighty way. I told you a little bit last night about my adopted son, Jamie. Jamie, stand. Jamie's with me tonight. He's an evangelist, and he's a preaching machine. Now, he is. He's a preaching machine. I'll tell you that. I've let him preach at our church on numerous occasions, and I'm going to let him preach some more. But there's uh, not uh, love him. Like if he was our own son. As a matter of fact, we've got a daughter 51, and he's 51. So we've got the children about his age, but 
we've learned to love Jamie in a wonderful way. Amen. Let's read together chapter 5 of the book of the Revelation, if you'll stand with me, please. You've read it before. John is uh, on the Isle of Patmos, as you know. He's been banished there for preaching the Word of God and for uh, sharing his testimony Amen. with folks. And so they banished him there to die. And while there, God gave him this great <laughs> revelation, this great vision. And we're going to start with verse 1, and I'm going to read the entire chapter. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And we know exactly who he was talking about. It was the line of the tribe of Judah, and the root of David was none other than Jesus himself. Amen. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. The word lamb is uh, in capital letters, and uh, John uses this word lamb 28 times in the book of Revelation, uh, pointing to Jesus, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, and when he had taken the book, and four, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. That's a bunch, isn't it? Amen. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I say, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. Let us bow our heads for prayer. And Brother Jamie, I'm going to ask you, some of you will pray for us. Lord, we thank you this evening for the privilege of coming together as a family of believers. Lord, we are in desperate need of a word tonight. Speak to our heart tonight, yeah. Lord. We love you, we appreciate you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We welcome you in this house. Yes. Thank you so much. Help us tonight. Help us to understand. Give us eyes to see you tonight. <coughs> in Jesus' name, amen. 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 <coughs> something different. I don't know if you've ever uh, experienced what I'm going to do tonight or not. I've only done this a couple of other times in uh, 
all the years I've been preaching. But uh, I was awake this morning about uh, 3 o'clock. I have to be up a lot during the night. And it was around about 3 o'clock. I, I don't remember exactly. It doesn't really matter. And the Lord uh, inspired me to do this once again. Amen. And so uh, I'm going to do it. And I hope it will be a blessing to you. Uh, I'm going to start off on a sad note. And then we're going to end up in heaven. <laughs> the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. Right. I talked to you just a little bit, I think, last night or not before last, about uh, bereavement. How that sometimes our hearts get broken when we lose our loved ones. And you'd be surprised at the number of people that don't want to talk about death. Man. It's just a subject that we don't like to think about. To be honest with you, I don't like to think about dying. And, uh, I ask this question often of people, and it's almost like it's a shock to them, and they don't want to talk about it. And I'll say to them, have you ever thought about dying? And a lot of people will say to me, absolutely not. I haven't even thought about dying, and I don't want to think about dying. Brother Horace, a preacher friend of ours, and I'll not mention his name, I may tell you after a while. But uh, I used to be around him more than I have in the last few years because he moved away. But you could talk to him about dying and big tears would well up in his eyes. He didn't want to talk about dying. It's not a pleasant subject, is it? Right. It really isn't. It's not a pleasant subject. And... Uh, so a lot of people don't want to even think about death. They don't want to think about dying. And to be honest with you, I don't either. Now, I know I'm saved. There's no doubt in my mind that in 1964, Mother's Day, that God saved me from my sins. Amen. There's no doubt in my mind that He sealed me with His Holy Spirit, and I'm secure yeah. in Jesus. And I am convinced in my mind that I will never lose That's right. that salvation Amen. that God gave me. That Amen. gift that God Amen. gave me, I'll never lose that. No way. Well, and you won't either. To tell you the truth about it. If you got any doubts about it, you're not either. But I kind of like it here on this earth, Brother yes. Amen. I'm attached to this earth. And when I think about leaving my family... And I said this the other night. Uh, it brings sadness to my spirit. Now I know that when I leave this earth, I'm going into the presence of the Lord. It's going to be wonderful. Amen. But right now, I'd like to stay a while. Yeah. I really would. I'd like to stay a little while longer. Uh, my son Chris lives in Raleigh, and he's working on his uh, PhD. And, and I, uh, you say, well, preacher, are you really bright? Are you bragging tonight on your son? Yeah. Uh, how many of y'all can carry a few pictures of your grandchildren around? Amen. Or even your children around? Yeah. Well, I don't uh, carry any pictures at all of my grandchildren because I don't have any. <laughs> Neither of my children have ever been married. And so I don't have any grandchildren. But uh, I was talking to my son Chris this afternoon on the telephone, and he's working on his PhD. He got his. Uh, degree at NC State University in computer science, went over to Carolina, my school, and got his master's degree in, uh, in business, and then uh, now he's back at NC State working on his PhD, and he has everything completed with his dissertation, and, and so he's working on that, so uh, I've said to my wife, I hope that the Lord will let me stay until I can see him uh, get his uh, doctor's degree. And, uh, of course, our daughter lives with us, as a matter of fact. Amen. She lives with us, and we have enjoyed having her uh, in our home. And then, of course, Jamie uh, came into our life, and uh, and he's our second son. 
And so, Lord, uh, I want the Lord to let me stay here as long as He will. Now, I'm prepared to go. I'm just not ready. <laughs> okay? And I hope He'll let me stay uh, on this earth for a while because I, I love life. I love living. Don't you enjoy living? Amen. Oh, I do. Every single day. Yeah. I love living. Yeah. Oh, I do. It's a joy uh, to live. Okay. Even though sometimes we're in pain, sometimes we experience struggles. Uh, like I said last night, sometimes we uh, are in despair. But uh, I just love living. But the Bible says it's appointed unto us to die. Now, you may disagree with me, and that's okay. I have no problems with that. But I, uh, I kind of zero in on, on that word appointed, that it's appointed unto man to die. I, I believe we have an appointed day. I, have, I believe that we have an appointed hour uh, when uh, God is going to say, okay, uh, your time is up. Now, that appointed time goes on to God. Some people live to be old, and so some folks live to be, uh, don't live to be very old. Uh, children by, uh, die in infancy, and of course, uh, we've had about 50 million plus little babies aborted uh, in the last uh, good many years. And so uh, God knew all of that. He knew every bit of that. But it's appointed unto us to die, and we're going to die. You're going to die. Amen. God may let you live to be uh, an older age, and uh, he may not let you live much longer if you're a young person. The one thing I've noticed as I look at the obituaries uh, practically every day is that young folk die just like old folk die. Right. And so it, the Bible says it's appointed unto man uh, once to die and after this the judgment. So I want to just uh, impress upon your mind and maybe we don't have anyone in this building tonight uh, who has it in their mind that, uh, hey, you know, I haven't even thought about dying. And I don't want to think about dying. I don't want to talk about dying. Do you know what I say to people when they say, well, no, I don't think about dying. I said, you ought to. Amen. You need to think Amen. about dying, Amen. especially if you're not right with God. Amen. Especially Amen. if you've never been saved, you need to really think Amen. about dying. Because we're not promised another day. Right. We're not promised another hour. God holds our next heartbeat in His hand, and all He has to do is squeeze it. Right. Right. That's it. I attended a funeral yesterday of a man who's 70 years old and uh, last Saturday I believe it was last Saturday he dropped dead with a sudden heart attack so it's appointed unto man to die and after this the judgment but then I want to get you on our journey to heaven the Bible says that as long as we're in this body We are absent from the Lord. Amen. Now, I don't mean that in the sense that uh, God is not with us. I talked to you one night about the filling of the Holy Spirit. When we got saved, He came in, and He lives within us now. And we know that we walk hand in hand with Jesus. Amen. Every single day, we walk in the presence and the power uh, of the God Almighty. We all know that. But the Apostle Paul says that to live in this body... Uh, we're absent from the Lord. But then he says, when we lay this body down, this old tent, this old tabernacle, yeah. when we leave this body, then we're going to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, I know that there are those who believe that when we die, and it is appointed unto man to die, that when we die, they will put us in the ground, they will bury us, or cremate us, whichever may be the case, and uh, we'll be in a state of unconsciousness uh, until the resurrection. A lot of folks believe that. But let me tell you again what the Bible says. To be absent well, from the body is to be present well, with the Lord. Well, yeah, yeah. So first of all, understand, and I think you do, uh, that we're all going to die unless Jesus comes for us Amen. in the rapture. Amen. But my message tonight 
is zeroed in on the fact that we're going to die, and the moment we die, we're going to go into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, I wrote a little song I'm going to sing for you, and I'm going to use, uh, I'm not going to sing at all, I'm going to use a biblical illustration of when our life breath leaves us. I've stood by the bedside of many, many people down through the years and watched them take their life's breath. Watched them die. Many, many people I've taken, I've, I've seen them take their life's breath. In the seventh chapter of the book of Acts, you know it by heart, a fellow by the name of Stephen, preaching the word of God. He was a holy man of God. Amen. Had God all over him. Full of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that he preached the word and it made people so angry that they wanted to kill him. Right. And not only did they want to kill him, they did yeah. kill him. Amen. And the Bible says while his life's blood was flowing out of his body because they'd stoned him. And while the blood was gushing from his body, wounds in his head, in his body, while he was dying, the Bible tells us Boy, in Acts right. chapter 7, yeah. That Stephen looked into heaven. Yes, amen. And he saw Jesus standing amen. at the right hand of amen. God the amen. Father. Amen. Now I don't have maybe I'm on Brother Horace, he's the he's the one that's the student of the scriptures, maybe to prove this. But I believe with all of my heart that when we take our life's breath in this world, there will be either a band of angels or some angels who will carry us out of Amen. this world. Amen. Amen. When my daddy died uh, many years ago, he was only 73 years of age, and uh, I walked into the intensive care room at Colorado Memorial Hospital just as my dad took his life's breath. And his pastor was there with him. His name was Larry Winkler. And Larry Winkler looked over me and he said, Larry, and I never had thought about it before until he said it. He said, if God would just pull this spiritual veil over our eyes back, he said, I'll guarantee you we'll see, we could see angels who were in this room ready for your dad to take his last breath to carry him out of here. Amen. Amen. And I never had thought about that before. But you talk about a blessing when I got to thinking about that, that God will send an envoy. Yeah. And he will he will lead us. That envoy of angels will lead us out of this world. Right. Now our family may not know anything about it, but I can tell you right now, when we take that life oh, breath, yeah. those angels are going to take us out of here. We used to sing that old song, Oh, come, angel band. Yeah. Come around me stand. Listen, Stephen saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God the Father. And I believe when he got his eyes on Jesus, those angels ushered him out of the year. They ushered him out of here. And he went into the presence of God. When we come down to that uh, Jordan, in those last minutes when we take that last breath, and those angels... Yeah. are going to be ministering to us. Amen. Those angels are going to escort us out of here. Yeah. I like to think about it this way. We're going to head down to the Jordan. Yeah. They're going to head down to the Jordan with us. Amen. And uh, we're going to be in good hands. Those angels are going to lead us out of here. And we're going to go down to the Jordan. I used to sing this song. I don't know if I can sing it tonight or not, but I'm just going to sing a little bit of it. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Amen. Let me tell you something. You're not going to have to die alone. Amen. You're not going to leave this world alone. You're not going to go into the presence well, of God alone. Amen. You're Amen. going to be escorted out of here. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just Amen. sing the chorus first. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus died.
get killed in a car wreck, yeah. or wherever it may be, that all of a sudden, oh. you're going to see Jesus. Amen. I believe that from the depths of my heart, Amen. Mr. Howard. Amen. That in that last moment, yeah. Yeah. we're going to see into heaven, and Amen. we're going to see Jesus yes. at the right hand of Amen. God the Father. And then about that time, oh, come, angel band, come and around me stand. We're headed out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. They may carry hey. our body. They may carry this old body in a, in a box down over to the graveyard on, and put it in the ground. But let me tell you something. We're going to be long gone. Hey. 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 Our family may grieve over us for a couple of days. And folks may gather into the church uh, to pay respects uh, to our life. But I'm telling you something, we're not going to be there. Amen. We're going to right. be long gone. Amen. We are going to die. When we die, I believe that we're going to see Jesus. Amen. And we'll be ushered out of this world Amen. into his presence. Amen. 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 John yeah. painted us a beautiful word picture. Of what heaven's going to be like. Yes, it is. We're kind of quiet here. Come on. Now, now you've been you've been lying with this week, and I want to thank you for that. Every now and then I see a hand go up, and every once in a while I hear somebody say, Ooh! There was a, I don't believe I see her tonight, but there was a lady that came, was right over here like that, and she came around there once. Oh, she was like, Woo! Yeah. That's the end of the service. That's right. Amen. That's the end of the service. Hey. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, like, I like that. I like yeah. that. Well, John right. painted us a beautiful picture. Yeah. Of what a little bit of what heaven is going to be like. <laughs> now, there's a whole lot of things that I'll not get into now. I will say to this to you heaven is a temporary place. Heaven that we're going to go to if we die before Jesus comes is a temporary place. According to what Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica, when Jesus comes yeah. in the rapture, he's going to bring all of those who are there with him. Right. And we're going to either be with him when he comes back or we're going to meet him in there. Okay? Yeah. I don't know, Brother Harris, if you ever knew Brother Curtis uh, Barbary. Yes, Brother Curtis Barbary was a friend of mine, and I had him in revival in here in Caldwell County uh, in the fall of the year. He was 42 years of age. Great preacher. Barbary. Yeah, you're right, dear. You're right. I hate to admit it, you're right. I, I, I had two friends. Curtis Barber and Curtis McCarthy. Uh, Curtis McCarthy, pastor in Hendersonville, and uh, he uh, was with me in revival, and we were selling church bonds to build a church over there in Whitman, and uh, I believe about 1971, somewhere along in there. It doesn't matter about the time. But Curtis could preach it. He knew the Hebrew, the Greek language, and they said he had an IQ of probably about 190 at least. And he could thrill your soul with the Word of God. Amen. Now, people shout a lot of times when we sing. But folks shouted when he preached. Amen. He Amen. could thrill Amen. your Amen. soul with the Word of God. Amen. And so uh, he borrowed a dump truck to haul some uh, gravel on the parsonage driveway. And the man that loaned him that truck told him, said, Now, Curtis, uh, there's a problem with the dump on that truck. And said, uh, when you dump a load of gravel, said it might freeze. Sometimes it does that; it'll freeze. But said you be very, very careful, and you stay away from it because it'll break loose just like that. And so Curtis all that gravel. Sure enough, it did freeze up there, and he got over close to it, looking around. I don't, I don't know why he did when he had already been warned, and it broke loose just like that. Hit him, broke his neck. Killed him instantly. He was 42 years of age, and I was a young preacher. I hadn't been pastoring very long, and really, I had a struggle with that. I questioned God about it. I'm going to be honest with you. He was a man so smart, and could thrill your spirit, could thrill your soul 
with the Word of God. And I couldn't understand why God would take him out at 42 years of age. And then I found out that Curtis had told some people that he didn't want to go in the rapture. That he wanted to go by the way of the grave so that he could experience paradise, heaven, as we know it now. He said, if I don't go by the way of the grave, I won't ever get to experience paradise. Because you see, when Jesus comes in the rapture, he's going to empty heaven out and bring everybody that's there now with him when he comes. And so Curtis wanted to, to go to paradise. He wanted to go to, we call it heaven today. And so John painted a very beautiful picture of what, a little bit of what heaven is like now. I don't know all the ins and the outs about what heaven is like now. But I do know the Bible says that we will be known as we are known now. Amen. And our loved ones who are in heaven, my mom and my dad and a lot of my friends and all of my family who are in heaven today, if I die and go by the way of the grave and get to see paradise, I'll get to see that. Now, I don't know what it's going to be like on the millennial earth. I really don't know what it's going to be like on the millennial earth when Jesus comes back to set up his kingdom. But I do believe that after the thousand year reign of Jesus, when he comes to set up his kingdom and will rule and reign with him during that time, that this will be our final resting uh, living place. This is where we'll live for eternity on this earth. Now it will be renovated. It won't be like it is now. The curse will be taken off. But here's where we're going to live throughout eternity on this earth. But in the meantime, our loved ones are in heaven with God now, and they're very much alive. Amen. Let me tell you something. They're very much alive. Yeah. And when we get there, if Jesus doesn't come, when we get there, we're going to see our loved ones, we're going to know our loved ones, and we'll get to talk with our loved ones. We will talk with them. We will see them. We'll have wonderful fellowship with them. I don't know everything else that's going to go on. I'm going to ask my mother, I'm going to say, Mother, why did you say, tell me one time I was the meanest human being you'd ever seen? <laughs> and you know what she's going to say? Because you were. <laughs> my mother told me that one time. <laughs> I believe from the depths of my heart, and I've only got to meet you folks the last uh, three to four days and past now, that uh, if we die, before Jesus comes, I'm going to get to see you again in heaven. Amen. 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 And you folks come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And you fellowship with one another. You love one another. You pray together. You praise God together. And I think that you're going to see one another over in heaven. Amen. I think you're going to see your loved ones. Amen. I'm going to see you, Brother Howard. You're not going to bring that stick with you. No, sir. Amen. <laughs> You can leave that thing behind. Yeah, yeah. You know what I've told my wife? And I don't know if she'll do it or not, but she says she probably will. Through the hearts. I've told my wife that when I die, I want her to put in my casket a box of old Jangles chicken <laughs> and uh, have plenty of gravy on the potatoes. And I want my golfing putter put in there with me. Because I figure that's the only club I'll need, all right? It's my putter. I can drive with it. I can putt with it. I do it. And so uh, she said she might just do that. <laughs> my friend Clarence Petit, the night that they received for him at the funeral home, he has four daughters. And one of his daughters, Luann, uh, I said to her, I said, Luann, I, and I was kind of joking, but I said, I've told him, my wife that I want her to put a box of old get jangled chicken in my casket when I die and my putter. And uh, she didn't say much about that. When we left the funeral home to leave at the, and, and the visitation was over with and Lou Ann was standing at the car that my buddy Clarence drove. It was his car. She lived in California. She had flown in and she was driving his car and she was standing right beside the car with her head uh, kind of down and I thought she was just hurting in her spirit. And, and um, so I walked over to try to encourage her, you know, to try to say, you know, I understand. My heart's breaking too. And so she said, uh, Larry, 
Uh, and she pointed, she said, there is Dad's putter. And she said, I'm going to put it in his casket. <laughs> and I said, uh, that would be wonderful, Luann. And I reached in there and got it out for her, uh, for her and it was his two iron. Now, if you don't play golf, you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it was his two iron. And I said to her, Luann, you go ahead and put that two iron in there. And when I get there, I'll use Clarence's, I mean, Clarence's two iron, and he can use my putt. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the part, and I'm, I'm bringing this thing to a close tonight. I, I didn't intend to preach very long tonight. We're going to die. I believe at the moment that that spirit leaves that body, we're going to cast our eyes on Jesus. Yeah. I believe angels are going to usher us Amen. out of this world. Amen. I really do. Yeah. Into the presence of Jesus. And there was a great host of people. John showed us Jesus in chapter 5. And there's a great host of people. There around him. And they were, go back and read it. They were saying, Glory. Yeah. Honor. Amen. Yeah. And praise. Uh -huh. Worthy yeah. is the Lamb. That's Worthy right. is the Lamb. Amen. Worthy Amen. is the Lamb. And on and on and on and on it went. A number that couldn't be counted, all of them together, were exalting. The Heavenly Father is exalted the Son. Amen. Amen. And they were praising Him. And they were praising Him. Absolutely. You may not feel like praising Him down here, but you wait till you get there. Amen. 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 Yeah. You wait till you see it. Horace, I kind of halfway believe we'll shout all the way from hey. here to the There you go. Yeah. Hey, I believe we'll praise Him all the way from here till we get there. Amen. Amen. How long will it take us? It won't take us long, but we'll praise His name. Amen. We'll Amen. shout Thank the praises you. of Jesus. Till we, I'm, and, and maybe throughout the Amen. eternal ages. Amen. I don't know how long we'll Amen. praise him, but then for a while, I think that I want to look around and see my mother, my mother, and my dad again, and see uh, the loved ones, my grand, my grandpa, my my daddy's people were Church of God people. And my granddaddy, my grandpa Klein, helped build the first Church of God in Hickory a Amen. long, long time ago. Great, great Christian man. I was only five or six years old when he died, but uh, they told me what a great man he was, a great child of God. But I've missed, I've, uh, I've uh, separated with loved ones and friends for a long, long time through death, and I want to see him. I want to see him. Now I want you to stand. The title of my message.